before we close and go into this, here's the decision that this is what's going to help your decision. Your why will define your try. Your why will define your try. And if you're trying and it's not working, then maybe, just maybe, your why isn't big enough. Think about why you're doing the things and think about the decisions that you have to make and think about why you're doing it and then think about the steps it's going to take to do it. And then all of a sudden you get into the process and you start kind of feeling like, "Mm, I don't think it's going to happen or I'm not, mm, it's not happening for you. Look at the why. Now think about it. And this was the challenge. I'm eight. That's a heck of a why to want to play professional football. A heck of a why. I've got two zippers right here. That's a heck of a why, but it was, I'll tell you what, it was one heck of a try. Some of you are very successful, but how do you really know why? And there's going to be other things that's going to come along where it's going to require you to try all over again. It doesn't just keep going, and you know that. There are five characteristics of a successful decision. And this is what I came up with, based off of a conversation that I had with my dad. And, but uh, before that, you know, and I'm going to just share this with you. Every Wednesday, except for today, every Wednesday, I fast. I'm going to share that with you. I'm not bragging. Saying it. Last year I did it every Wednesday, 52. And I thought by the 40th one there was going to be breakthrough or something great. Why? Because I was, I was trying to get, take my business to another level. I was trying to take my family to another level. So I needed to clear the clutter, clear the plate, move, you know, don't satisfy anything. It's one thing to be focused, it's another to have sharpened focus. That's me at lacrosse, about to run hurdles. Now, the guy next to me is a good friend. That's Jeremy. Jeremy's focused, but I was sharp. My focus was a little different than his. He's a great runner, great. He actually holds some records over at the university. He was not really a 55-meter runner. But my point of it is, is there's one thing to be focused. When you go back to the office, are you going to have focus or are you going to have sharpened focus? There's a difference. If you have employees, you know the ones that you can absolutely depend on because they are so sharp, and you can count on on the back of your hand that, you know what? I know at 501, they're going to still be there. Instead, at 459, you can see the back of their car moving, going down 3rd Street. After you get sharp and focused, you got to get clarity of mission. you got to have a plan. Get a plan of what it is that you want to have happen in everything that you do and surround yourself with good people. Identify the bad stuff. The excess of the bad things. Know what's bad. Know the challenges. You want to start a business? Understand. It's not a, they're not denial. It's not saying that you can't make it, but you need to also understand there are things that's just going to happen. It flooded today. How many people are you are plumbers? How many, who has a business over that, in that area over by campus? And then you're sitting underwater today. You've got a plan. Do you understand that there are things that's going to come about that's going to knock you off? But you're making this decision. These are life and death decisions. These, these, they, they really are. Once you get that, then you've got to get discipline. All discipline is doing it the same way, the right way, every day. And when you're disciplined and when, and, when, and when you feel like you can't do it that way every time, I want you to go back and look at your why and then start defining your try again. Really look at that. Look at the why because if you can't do it the same way, the right way every day, it's going to fail. So reevaluate. When you get to this stage of it, when you're on it, and you know when you're, 
Come on, your wives know when it's going good, honey, baby. Ooh, we, we going to Disney, right? When it's going good, it's going good. That's because we, we're hitting it. We're right there, step by step by step by step by step. We've not changed it. We know we make some adjustments, but for the most part, we are disciplined. And we're great at what we're doing at that point. From there, you're going to see increased production. I told you before, 1996 was my first talk at a little elementary school. I traveled the country, and the more and more, and this is just a sales job, when I make calls, I get gigs. When I don't make calls, I don't get gigs. When I go and speak, I speak more. When you get disciplined, when you have that plan, and when you sharpen focus, you can't help but see productivity. You will see it in everything in your life, even with your faith, even in your faith walk. It takes faith. You're looking at it. I'm not supposed to be here. I'm supposed to be like the, you know, what happens in Milwaukee to guys that are in homeless shelters? What happens to those guys? Well, I got focused. Nope, I got sharpened focused. What happens to the guys that's had bars on Third Street that just not worked? Well, they were focused. They were sharp and focused. They didn't have clarity of what it really was going to be. They didn't look at the pitfalls that can happen. And maybe they weren't disciplined. And so they didn't see the production. But even in your walk, you want good things for your family, you know? Seek ye first the kingdom, and all these things will be added to you. Focus. Focus. Sharpen focus. And the last is mastery. You get to a point and you come to a place of mastery. That's the cover of my book. And all mastery is is winning. What did you set out to do? Have you achieved your why? And not just did you achieve your why, but when you look back at it, the try. The thrill of the chase has to be greater than the thrill of the capture. There's 32 NFL teams, right? There's one Super Bowl, okay? All of a sudden, Super Bowl Sunday has become the most important day in America. I don't know why. I don't know how that happened, but it's a big deal. But I have a philosophy behind it. Part of it is, is that I think people innately have this thing about community and coming together. We've got 53 guys, doesn't matter what they make, and they're able to come together. Why is that intriguing? Because on Monday after the Super Bowl, a lot of us go to a place where we can't find that. There's companies that have the row team, okay? You seen the picture with the rowers? I'm sure you've seen it. And it's talking about teamwork. And it, most people don't have a real clue about what it is, and you can't understand why it's not being successful because most people probably have never been a part of a team, but they are intrigued by the idea of 53 guys going for one thing, and there's mastery. So whatever that trophy is, whatever it is that you want for your life, for your business, and your family, and you get to a place of where your faith takes over, Okay, I was, I mean, this is free. There's no such thing as blind faith. Okay, me sitting in that homeless shelter and saying, well, I guess I'll have to make it to the NFL from here. That is not blind faith. I already saw it. You being successful in your business, you've already seen it. That's why you're in business. Your vision statement. All of your vision statements should be, I'm doing this to make money to take care of X, Y, Z. If, you, if your vision statement is anything else other than that, you are lying to yourself. Now, your mission is different. Hey, I want to do X, Y, Z to do this, and this is how we do our daily this and this and that. But your vision is really that, because you need to take care of yourself, and you want to have a profit. You're doing what you're doing for a reason. 
But once you've gone through these steps and, and you check and balance, there's got to come a point where there's got to be mastery. Otherwise, you're never going to be happy. You will never be happy. You'll never understand when you've gotten to that point. I wrote this book from a standpoint of I never knew my dad, but I eventually became a father. I found my father, became a dad. And the challenge is getting people to understand in our innate nature of who we are. We are all fathers. We are fathers beyond ourselves. You men are fathers to this community. You're not just fathers to your own. Find a why and then try like heck. Find a why and then just try and try and reevaluate and try again. See yourself beyond your own four walls in everything that you do. Ken Blanchard said one time, I was listening to him, and it's funny and it's true. He says, you get to a point of mastery, your cash registers will go <laughs> ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. Master the human experience, gentlemen. Master the human experience. Make a decision. Let your why define your try and master the human experience. Thank you.